We need to stall for Jack's flank. We can play fight. We can play fight. Yeah, I'm keeping. They do see my TP now. Okay, Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Just go. Yeah, we can just fight it. We can just, just go. 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 Yeah, you can go whenever, Bill. I got I'm coming. Star Baron. Star Baron. I'm looking there. He's weaning. 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 Just fight. Just fight. Just fight. Go mid. You guys can add mid. I think. Cancel. 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 That was our LCS Connected Comms replay presented by AT&T, voted on by chat. Yes, you, chat, the same chat that has been watching this series that has been dominated by 100 Thieves in the first two games. So I would say good vote, chat, because that replay had the comms that 100 Thieves have been referencing with Tomo. Did you hear Tomo's voice in that? Everyone else is, you know, discussing things. He's like, just go. We're going to win this fight. Just go. We're going to fight, fight, fight. And they win it easily. And then he's like, immediately, go mid, teleport, we can end. This type of stuff, uh, he's, he seemed very calm and straightforward, and he was certainly correct in that it was a very easy <laughs> win on the fight. Oh! Oh, oh that was, a, that was a, quite the poster. Yeah, it, it that feels, was some edge to it. Honestly, I feel really bad because we had like the storylines of like, oh yeah, Tomo, Revenge Arc versus Dignitas, but they're beating them so bad <laughs> that you feel like a little mean bringing these things up. It's like a, a guy who was picked on in school and he becomes a 300 pound Omega buff guy, goes to get his bullies back and they're just normal dudes. Just nothing special at all. And he is just suplexing people right now <laughs> in the parking lot of this series. Summoner hey, Rift. we got Jensen on Azir. Jensen on the mages has arrived. Okay. He's back. This see, is what we wanted to see. Series saving game right here, incoming. Let's see. I mean, they're going to have to get something going. I really feel like Ding needs to get something going early, something to build some momentum around, get that confidence back so they can start laughing, having fun. Because one of the things that I've been noticing in this series is when you look at the player cams, Dig is looking unhappy. They are looking yeah. down on the dumps. And one of the things that really was getting people excited about this Dignitas roster was even when they were losing earlier on in the split, they were laughing about it. They were joking about it. They were having fun. There was that camaraderie that you really love to see. Uh, and so we'll see. <laughs> Oh. There's, there's so many things you can just meme on. The smites here as well. River just yoinking away everything from Dignitas. Yeah. Uh, and River is on the Lilia again. I think very good pickup from them. But on the Dignitas side, you know, uh, very straightforward with the Maokai Renekton answers. And now, honestly, I think you do need to keep this trend of getting Sniper, his champion, in the first three picks in first rotation. Sniper's champion pool is a little bit smaller in the ones that he's super comfortable on. And so I do like this. Grab the Cassante here. Now 400 Thieves into the Renekton matchup. Uh, he'll, he should be very fine up there. And so Dignitas has a couple of big changes here. Obviously, Jensen going to Mages. This is something that we already talked about wanting to see. But also, this will be the first game in the series that Spika is not playing one of these AP junglers, right? He went Lilia, then he went Brand. This time, we're going to get the Maokai. Maybe this is what they really need. A go button, a frontliner, a dude who can buy Zeke's Convergence and get shot and not die. <laughs> well, he might be playing First Strike Maokai in AP, so we'll see. Uh, it could be that build, could be the Zeke Report it. build. <laughs> Report it. It seems people are still playing First Strike Maokai in, in Pro a fair bit, man. So we'll have to see what it's going to be from Spika. But even with the first three, I feel like Digger are just going to go, all right, we're just drafting 5v5, we're drafting scaling, and we are looking to outfight you around objectives. We'll see if they're going to be able to do that. That has been, you know, the tried and true thing in the LCS for so many years. When you think back, especially to some of the older generations of teams when they were really dominating, you know, back in like double lift era when teams were built around him, it's like, all right, 5v5 scale, front line, that's how you win the LCS. Yep. I think things have changed a little bit over the last handful of years where teams are kind of bucking that trend somewhat. Um, but these Dignitas players, you know, obviously came up in those eras, dominated in those eras, and I think are going to be looking to try to depend upon that here in a potential knockout game would send them to that lower bracket here, would close up the series. Won't knock them completely out of playoffs, but it's so much scarier, man, when you've only got that one life left in every moment going forward. Ziggs, Smolder, Kaisa, and Leona banned out here in the second half. They do not want to deal with Quiz Smolder again. <laughs> Yeah, I want to see, because I'm kind of assuming, like them, that this is going to be a Tomo Zeri. It could be a Quid Zeri, but I feel like Tomo has been really good on the Zeri, and, and leaving fifth pick here to reveal this flex pick of the Zeri, which one it goes into. I really like this from 100 Thieves, keeping uh, Dignitas waiting here, and now we'll see if it's going to be another Ezreal or Callista from Sven. 
Mm. Uh, I also really like the Nautilus pick specifically from 100 Thieves because it also denies it from Dig. We know that point and click CCs are very effective against Zeri, and they're just going to take away one of the preeminent ones. Pro prominent ones, dominant ones. Whatever the right word is for that, it's one of the big ones that people like to point and click her with, and now they can't have it. All right, well, Braum gonna get grabbed up, so is a pretty solid answer as far as like denial, can be pretty strong in the Oh, game. please slam it. That would be a nice spicy kill-oriented counter pick This would to be like Azir. a spring quid pick. And I would like to highlight that the defensive buffs for Azir were armor, not Magic resistance ah. because they were they were aimed oh. at helping him out. Oh, oh nice! The it's Senna. gonna it's gonna be Senna, so it's a farming Nautilus. I want to see if we're gonna get the build that I was talking about. We yeah, sure AP are. supporty build. I think we should. Yeah. The lethality build I think is pretty dead after the patch. Yeah, they it's removed the scaling. All, exactly, all lethality scaling uh, away from that Q heal, uh, which was a really big change. It's a build that is very, very strong. You can stack up the, the soul so quickly, and you can be so frustrating to deal with. Like, it is really, if you're not used to playing against it, shocking how much healing can come out and shielding uh, with this build. Now, I also want to see more from Dignitas. I want to see them force a level one invade with a Braum. I Like, they need to stack advantages in this game. I think right now, the, the way that this series has gone, you need more than just some changes in drafts. You need more than just Jensen on Azir. I want to see them cook up some really spicy level one, try and pincer somebody with a Braum, try and get some summoner spell advantages level one, maybe even, you know, look for some sort of kill or something. You want to see them play with some guts. Yeah. They I haven't mean, had guts the first couple of games. I haven't <laughs> seen them doing a whole lot. At the very least, level one invade and try and get the really deep wards to see where 100 Thieves are going because 100 Thieves have really been running them around with the lane swaps, with the lane swap calls. And uh, Dignitas, let's go. Game plan here needs to be in action very early. Remember, this is it for Dignitas. If they lose here, they're done in the series. They're going to lower bracket. 100 Thieves would love to start this playoffs off with a clean sweep, especially with how rocky their regular split was looking. And let's be honest, too, even if Dignitas are still alive, if they lose this series, there are a big three teams looming in the LCS. And if you're getting swept by a team that is not one of those big three, that is really going to be tough to imagine yourself making it to Worlds because there's three World slots, FlyQuest, TLC9, heavy favorites for it. The big three and the small five. <laughs> All right, while we're waiting on our minions to spawn, it's time for an uh -oh. interview with Emily. And hold on one second, Emily. We've got Ayla potentially in a little bit of trouble. Runaway Mr. Nautilus. Shouldn't, take a lot of Mystic shots. A whole lot but... of chance. Okay, there we go. He's down to 250 HP. He's fine. Emily, take it away. She's standing by with Golden Glue. No way. All right, we're still watching as, as Grayson is going to see wh whether Ayla will escape or not. Um, one thing I did want to talk about this draft strategy going into this game and the previous game is that you've been saving these kind of sneaky flexes, picking AD um, or bot lane in 4-5. or five. Was this something you prepped for Dignitas specifically or just something that you felt suited the team well? Yeah, I think right now um, I feel pretty confident in like our just our overall drafting strategy. I don't think it's specifically versus Dignitas. I think it's just like having flexible picks and draft always helps you when you're on red side and mm -hmm. it helps us get an advantage. So I think it's just uh, normal, dr good drafting, I guess. Yeah. And then the other thing I really wanted to ask you is how you guys have responded in lane swap situations and also just general lane assignments. It was really impressive to me, especially in game one, how you were able to get advantageous matchups, how you responded really well to dig. Is this something you've been specifically practicing uh, with your team as well? Yeah, I think lane swaps seem inevitable right now. It seems like a lot of teams are swapping, and it's just something that you have to practice if you're playing competitive League of Legends right now. So, you know, we're definitely we're practicing standard, or we're practicing swaps, and you kind of have to know how to do both right now. How much do you think your team has improved in that? I think we've improved a lot, actually. Um, I think at the beginning of the season, I was so scared of swaps. Going in with this, like, rookie roster, I thought we were just going to get absolutely railed in every swap situation. Um, but... We're actually doing pretty good, and I'm really happy with the progress and the growth of our team this split. All right, well, all the best. Thank you so much for taking the time, Golden Glue. Back to you, casters. Take it away. I actually really loved this move uh, at level one from Tomo going mid because Ayla had been pushed out, so they can't just play 2v2 from the start anyway. It was walking back from base, so getting that early chunk on Jensen is, again, allowing Quid to have Pryo in mid, and we know what that did from last game. Uh, yeah, I went back to investigate exactly how he... Oh, my God, that is big. 
<laughs> that's, that's bigger than usual. I have so many comments I'm not gonna make. He, I <laughs> want someone saying something. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to highlight on the mini map as a more normal size what Tomo did there. That was especially to make that about size. That was especially intelligent. He showed. <laughs> Okay, hold on. You hold on. <laughs> we, we, we got a problem down here in bottom lane. The Eep forces the flash away from Isles. The Braum survives with only 50 HP. That is not a big amount of health. <laughs> Tomo, <laughs> Tomo showed on vision to the Maokai, to Spika, on this top side and stayed there harassing him, which allowed him to get that mind game and then wrapped all the way around the mid lane to come from the other side, which is why he got the... the the big chunk <laughs> onto Jensen. For sure. Thanks for that breakdown. That was I huge. understand. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I, I got to remember what we were talking about. <laughs> My brain's spaghetti. <laughs> All right. Uh, River has control over the enemy jungle here. Going to pay a repeat visit here to this bottom lane. It's a 3v2. Should be a dive. 100 Thieves are going in for it. They know that Isles is already in trouble. It's first blood for Tomo. They know that they'll lose Ayla. A little bit more damage is all they need to pick up Zvan. One last shot. It's a double kill for Tomo. Tomo able to get both those kills here. Really going to accelerate the build. Spika going to try to find something back on the, on the quid. I mean, he's... Okay. No, dude, he's going for he's chicken. Got crab, crab vision, maybe. Chicken I don't vision. understand that. He does, it's not like Quid is playing cleanse. You could at least get a chunk on him. That was, that was bizarre. It's crab gaming. It's where you game for the crab. I guess he feels like it's just not even worth spending the time. That they have no, no chance of getting a kill. But Quid I, was pretty far up there. You he, feel he, like they yeah, he didn't think like he could get anything because yeah. Jensen, Jensen was probably calling. I can't follow up much. I don't have much damage. And so then he wanted to focus on either getting Raptors or on getting the Scuttle Crab. As simple as that. Didn't want to waste time. Want to get something out of his time uh, rather than just a tiny bit of health. But 100 Thieves and Tomo himself are... Looks like di disappointed that Dinger Talks aren't putting up more of a fight. Yeah. It's too easy. Wants a challenge. <laughs> Tomo's revenge. You can see there giving him the Homelander vision. First player of the week, and I get to play against Dig. It's time to get some payback. And the man is certainly doing that here at the start of this one. It's a 2-1 to game for 100 Thieves. They're up 1,000 gold overall. And now another 2v2 here in the bottom lane as Sven is under pressure. Nice stun back onto Ayla to stop the further chase. But Sven still below half HP here. I was really curious about this when he got the double kill, if he was still going to do the Enchanter style build. Clearly he is not. He picked up a Longsword, uh, so he is going to go very likely towards the more old school Lethality style build. Uh, could even go like Kraken or something if he feels like, hey, they're really frontline and I have this early gold injection, maybe I can do that. But I just feel like Echoes of Halia into, into full support is just so OP right now. I like the Echoes build, but I will also submit a Black Cleaver because That's you, can, too, yeah. you can instantly stack two stacks of it. So maybe if he does go that and wants to shred. Ooh, Tomo has to fall back now as River shows up. Dignitas still trying to scrap for this one as Ayla's at 200 HP, has to try to get away. The Sapling will do a little bit more. Dignitas keeping everybody alive, fighting off the thieves. Ayla was very close to tower range there with uh, with the little bump, but as you say, nobody going to drop, no casualties there, so just going to be a reset, and River can go up to his red slash grubs. I think you're actually totally right. It's got to be Black Cleaver. I, I think Lethality would be so bad. Yeah, it's a nice little change where it's just on this patch, they allowed Black Cleaver to instantly stack it. Before, there was this tiny little internal cooldown on it, but Senna Q, yeah, you can just... Uh, and then even in the patch list, they specifically mentioned both the auto and the Q double stack. Yeah, I like how sometimes they do that where they're like, what? hey, buy this. People aren't going to pick up on this unless we specifically highlight it and say it. Yeah, so definitely a really strong item as well. And even sometimes in those Enchanter style builds, people will go Black Cleaver into Enchanter or sometimes Enchanter into Black Cleaver later on. Uh, so definitely pretty viable either way. All right, 100 Thieves gonna go ahead and secure a couple of grubs up there. The first pot goes their way as Spika 
wants to get away, but River is ready with the Eep and the Sleep Speaker doing a good job dodging the damage with a twisted advance. He just might live, but Quinn shuts him down anyway. Tomo fires up a shot there with that dawning shadow, but it's not even really that required now, is it? Meanwhile, the 2v2 continues here in the bottom lane while Licorice versus Sniper up in the top side at the same time. All out Sniper isn't going to find his mark. Licorice getting back underneath the turret with the flash still intact. Bottom side, the 2v2 keeps raging on as Isles leads the charge. Ayla on the front line with a burst of healing from Tomo is in no danger at all. Look at all the pressure that 100 Thieves are able to create stemming from that uh, jungle there. River, flash used, big CS lead, chasing him out, and they actually get the kill into the hands of Quid just as Jensen tried to peel for him with the Azir sweep. But Quid still got the kill, still more early money onto this Zeri. Again, another massive, massive early lead for 100 Thieves, which this time around have really good scaling options as well with the Zeri, with the Lilia, with the Senna here. And Sniper had been even uh, pushing up on topside to allow River to go for that super aggressive invade. You know, Lilia versus Maokai is always like Lilia running around, power clearing, pushing the Maokai out, and Spika running for his life. Now he won't have flash for any sort of quick plays for the team either. 100 Thieves, again, just feel like they're playing so much better as a team than Dignitas is. You can see here, schedule update. We've still got some more games coming up next week with our top two getting the bye to not play here in this first week. But the victor here will go up against Team Liquid. So it's not like your path is going to be easy from this point no. forward. But again, 100 Thieves starting off looking pretty strong. And you have to remember that we are going to have games on Friday next week as well. So we're going to have those three days of games instead of just Saturday and Sunday. OK, Dignitas wants to challenge 100 Thieves as they try to take this Drake. Looks like they will force the Thieves back for now. Quid ready to be a part of this fight if it continues, but the Drake is down to 2,000. Only Quid is near it right now. 100 Thieves might still look to come in here. Bowling ball goes through. Drake gonna be secured by Speaker. Now Ayla here on the front line. Isles is chunked down to half, but Ayla's the one truly in danger. Gonna get healed up by the Senna yet again. Dignitas going in. This might be what they were looking for, but Dignitas is about to lose some bodies. River's still staying alive. Quid's in the middle of everybody. Running and gunning and having fun and not even stopping. It's a double kill. Back over to the Lilia. It's 100 Thieves again. Finding the dub in the team fight. The fight was looking good until you realize Quid is still full health. Still has the ulti, and he went crazy in that fight, getting accelerated again and again and again in the series. Also like what Tomo did there, baiting and then flashing over the wall. They take down Sven. It is now two kills uh -oh. in the hands of the Zeri. And we just might have another kill up here with a 1v1. Cassante versus Renekton. Sniper missed the third in Topo strike. He needs a little bit more damage. Licorice wanted to flash it, but the auto buffers through. It's a solo bolo for Sniper. He's part of the team. You know, bottom side, they win the team fight. I'm up, here too. Uh, top side, he's like, <laughs> I'll do it too then. Let me get that solo bolo. This kid sniper is such a star already in spring he was the solo kill leader he's doing very well as far as solo kills this season even though 100 thieves had a really rocky start to the season i love to see that he's back to his his old ways here up in the top he was very confident coming in and uh showing it once again yeah i believe league wide he was tied for fifth i think is what it was in solo kills so we're getting another one Gang, there you go with the dredge line there on Isles. River lands a bowling ball, but uh, not really going to go for anything there. You don't want to overcommit onto a Braum. Isaac, you know, the other day when you were doing play by play, you called it a swirl seed. And I had actually forgotten that that's the real name of Lilia's E because I just always call it a bowling ball. Oh, I thought you were going to tell me that that's not what it's called. And I was no, like, well, that, that could happen. No, that is not. <laughs> I, mean, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't dog you like that on the official show. Like that, I was actually like, oh, damn, that's that's really good. I completely forgot that it's a bowling ball. Meanwhile, River goes in. He don't even need to hit the bowling ball. He got all three with the blooming blows in the front line. Still might just get taken out. He can't find the kill with the Eve. But a beautiful side step away from Jensen? the last mystic shot. Keeps him alive. Jensen goes in for a three-man shuffle a three-man play but it ain't enough dignitas is so disjointed they can't get a damn thing it's another double kill for tomo i just feel bad for him at this point river is dan literally prancing in front of them river prancing not wrong. around he pranced. he pranced with 100 hp <laughs> dodges the mystic shot stands in front of jensen as they kill him oh it is 
it is 100 Thieves all the way this series, fellas. Five. Season's over. It's Tomo time. 5,000 gold lead. Not even 13 minutes into the game. Here's another look at how it started. Yeah, and I mean, it's Ayla finding the initial engage, pushing forward. They get a three-man sleep, which was so big. Even though Zven has the cleanse, him and Isles have to retreat so quickly. And River played the edge of this fight so well, getting the maximum possible damage out, avoiding the sweep from Jensen, barely surviving. All right, let's vote. Is it Tomo time, River Revolution, Ayla era? <laughs> What do we got for Sniper? You got anything? Sniper season. Sniper season, okay. Straight forward. Uh, and then Quid. What starts with a Q? Um, <laughs> Q's hard. Oh! 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 That's actually the 100 Thieves emote That's that they're putting the in, too. That's 100 Thieves emote. That's so good. That they changed. That had to get yeah. changed. They might have nerfed the emote, but they can't nerf Sniper, <laughs> man. Oh he let them know. He hit him with it. He oh. let them know. Their minimap is not scaled up. <laughs> Oh, man, I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> Especially Ouch. fitting after our discussion earlier. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, children, focus up, focus up. We've got to pause here. I don't think I will. <laughs> <laughs> serious time. It's serious time, League of Legends. It's Pagoda Pog moment. Uh, Pagoda Pog. I can go for some egg rolls. I'm kind of hungry. Those are looking crispy. Crispy and juicy. They what a are. combination. Wow. That's yum, a yum. Right there. So Spika is uh, having a camera issue. He said he can't center his camera for some uh, reason. So they're trying to figure that out. Hopefully be able to get that fixed up pretty quickly. Um, and then be able to uh, get it going once again. We'll keep you updated as soon as we have any sort of info. Um, but obviously, 100 Thieves in a massively commanding position. They are crushing Dignitas in this game. And I think it's it's pretty surprising you know, you, I, I wouldn't have been surprised if you told me 100 Thieves won. Not at all. I thought this really could go either way. Um, but the way in which they are doing it is really pretty surprising to me because Dignitas is this team with incredible amounts of, of playoff experience. They have so many titles between them, and they are just being ran over. I mean, look back to the predictions that we got from the desk at the start of the day, right? It was two dig, 200 Thieves. All of them were 3-2, except for Jat predicting 3-1. But we for were all Dignitas, split here too. we were all split up here on the desk. I think everybody was expecting this to be a bit of a messy brawl type of a series. So I'm right there with you, Isaac. 100 Thieves winning? Sure, that's predictable. 100 Thieves cleanly 3-0 stomping Dignitas, which I would say Dignitas' chances of winning this third game under 10% now with the state yeah. of the lead and the current clock. It's it's rough. 5K, 13 minutes in, right? Like, that is a, a shellacky. It is such a fun story from the other perspective, though. The Dignitas story, it's pretty sad. But <laughs> if you balance it out with the 100 <laughs> Thieves perspective, this is a team that people really want to root for because yeah. they have seen them struggle on stage for the majority of this season. And they really went through it. You know, Sniper tweeting out about how, how hard it was, uh, you know, mentally – to, to be under this high pressure and continue to compete at this level uh, and then having to bring in Tomo to to replace Meech here for this team to now have such success is, is a very uplifting side of the story. And with River and Quid especially, where these two players are players that you know have shown in the LCS to have extremely high peaks for them to be playing really well again, not to mention just the other parts, uh, you know, that were changed around for 100 Thieves, but uh, for the individual play to also be rising. You know, we have Quid dominating on some very different champions, yeah. a, a wide variety there. So yeah. uh, is uh, is definitely the other side of the coin. Absolutely. And, I mean, it's, it's really, really exciting. You know, they're such a fun team to cheer for, such a, a fun group of guys to, to watch play league. And I don't think it will change a lot of the predictions given that their next opponent would be TL. Mm. But I think against a non-TL opponent, people are really going to have to reevaluate how they're looking at 100 Thieves because this is 100 Thieves that is looking so much better than they were in the regular season. If Quid is playing like this, if River is playing like this, if they can play to the level we saw from them in spring, they really can be a threat against a lot of other teams in playoffs. And I think it's good that you actually bring up Team Liquid because if you're looking for some dream playoff runs, you don't have to think far back. Just think back to Team Liquid themselves. They were not considered the super team in spring. 
They were yeah. they were kind of mediocre through spring, and it was just in playoffs where they started to dominate the LCS, and then they went to MSI, and they really impressed everybody, and, and they're clearly the top team now. But that really started in their playoff run. And then you go back further, Energy with their magical run where they upset Cloud9 and went to Worlds and really impressed, mm -hmm. uh, you know, taking down G2 and doing the whole region proud. There have been very recently some good examples yeah. of unexpected, really big playoff improvements for teams and them finding a lot of success. So you don't really have to be too much of a dreamer yeah. to see that possibility or get excited for 100 Thieves. I mean, that's kind of the excitement of playoffs, right? Is it is a bit of a, a reset button on your season. You have that opportunity to, if you can show up, if you can really make things work, especially since we're on live patch, we're on a new patch here, teams are going to be saying, hey, if we can adapt quickest, if we can have you know the new hot strategy before someone else, maybe we can really be the ones to take advantage. A little update, refs have a solution that they think should fix Spica's issue. Hopefully it will do so, and we will be uh, back to it here pretty quick. But again, we will keep you updated. And until then, we are just going to keep on chatting. Uh, I see things being unpaused, so I think we are good to go, and we are getting back into game. All right. There was a guy in chat that said, just unpause already. That's all we needed to do. That's so it. We got wow. you. Good call, chat. That's Thank crazy. you for that. That was, that was actually me. I did that. Oh, <laughs> nice. That see? was actually the ref solution. Kobe's got it all I, I figured out. So they're slapping their heads like, why didn't we think that? We could have just unpaused <laughs> when he paused. Oh. It's incredible. As uh, River wanted to bonk Licorice on the head, but not quite going to find the Eep on that one. Uh, yeah, 5,000 gold lead, 14 minutes into the game. The plates have not yet fallen, and already it feels like the curtains are closing on the stage for Dignitas here in the upper bracket. I don't really see the angle to try to get back into this one, unless it's kind of like what you're talking about, that old era of LCS where... You just wait for 45 minutes, have your carry scale up to five items, and yeah. there you go. I mean, when you're this far down this early, it's so tough, because normally you're like, okay, you want to fight on your item completion before they have their second? Well, the second ones are going to be coming in pretty fast here. So even the window on that is kind of closing. Black Cleaver is done for Tomo, as Kobe was talking about. So strong on this Good patch call. now. Uh, and, you know, we'll see if he goes into Echo Zahalia, that kind of support style from there, or if he's going to continue building a little bit more damage because he was accelerated with all these early kills. I mean, he's 407 this early on. So if there was a time to build more damage, I guess it would be more justifiable here. All right. We can try and draw out the plan for Dig here since they're okay. so far behind. I think the dream scenario is we get enough money with Ven mid to buy his Trinity Force. Then we get a Faker Azir sweep from Jensen, who just pinged level 11, does have his flash. And off of the pick that they get with that Jensen Azir sweep, they can get some objective bounties, hopefully. And hopefully that their pick is is going to be on the Senna or the Zeri. Well, yeah, speaking that's, of that Zeri, that's he's causing some trouble here in topside. Uh, Jensen uses the ult and the flash, sidesteps the Dawning Shadow critically. Quid was thinking about maybe chasing him a little bit further, but ain't quite gonna find it. It's gonna be a lot harder to make plays with no Azir Flash and no Azir ulti, Mr. And Kobe. with no mid lane turrets, because those are going down in a hurry. They lost the tier one, they got a charge on the tier two, they're pushing up, they're taking the dragon, they're pushing all three lanes while taking the dragon, while sieging towers. 100 Thieves know the position that they are in, and they are not gonna cede any sort of an advantage. Spika just trying to get away. Again, he has to ult just to try to escape. It feels like any sort of tool that Dignitas might be able to use to try to get back into the game is just being forcibly taken from them because 100 Thieves aren't giving them room to breathe. I mean, look at how much farm is being taken away. Look at Quid's farm, 186. We're 16 minutes in. You know, he is so far ahead of the pace of these other carries. You know, over 30 ahead of mid lane. He's over 60 ahead of where Sven is as the enemy AD carry. Uh, and he is very, very fed, has picked up kills, has picked up plates. This guy already has two items done here at 16 minutes, where Jensen barely has his first complete. He's just got a couple of amp tones in inventory. Man, I wonder, what did Golden Glue learn at that wedding he was at last <laughs> week this team? Because the players were joking around about how, oh, yeah, last week of the, the regular season, you know, coach has some IRL obligations. He learned some kind of knowledge at that wedding that this team is just put into good use because they look like an entirely different squad from the messiness that we saw during regular season as now River may have just been cast or cursed by someone. Nope, gets away. Jensen won't find the shuffle and River's ready to re-engage with the flash. Blooming blows for the two-man sleep. 
True shot barrage hits, but it's not even enough to grab the kill. It's a double for Quid. It's three dead on Dignitas' side. And 100 Thieves will waste no time, lose no momentum. The 1v1 in the bottom lane. Both men still standing. Sniper is about to run out of the all out, so he's just going to leave. It's all 100 Thieves all day, Flowers. Everything is theirs. They're going to get the tower on top of it. Despite Sniper got, not getting another solo kill on bottom, that doesn't really have any stakes to it. That's more just for entertainment. That's for, uh, that one was for the fans. Can't get it, but also doesn't die. Just backs off, and the rest of the team has taken over the entire map. Did I say it was a 5k lead? Because now it's a 9k lead after yeah. that. They took the tier 2 mid, they win the fight top, they take the tier 1 there as well. 5k lead at 14 minutes, 9k lead at 18 minutes means that lead grew by 1,000 gold a minute after the plates already fell. 100 Thieves is just demolishing Dignitas. And here we go again. Halo with the dredge line, but there's not enough firepower to follow that up. Thankfully for Dignitas, they just are struggling to stay alive right now. You can see Tomo just sweeping through the enemy jungle, removing every ward. Probably next next for 100 Thieves, since Baron is only a minute and a half away and they're so far ahead, they can just try and collapse down to the bottom side and finish off the secondary turret. Nice chunk of change uh, inside that turret, and then they'll transition to the other side of the map after their job here is done. It's already 50%, so they just have everybody rotate over, already pushed out mid lane, Really good kind of fundamentals from 100 Thieves to be able to use this massive lead to just make sure that Dinitas have so few options. And now pushing in, it's been actually even Arcane shifting forward there a little bit to try and uh, get something started. But the Siege with the Void Mites there really doing its work. It's such a big benefit when you control the early game and got a full six. You just have to have everybody show up at the turret, spawn all the Void Mites, Tag it a little bit, and that thing will go down before the Baron comes up and makes it an easy timer to then rotate all of their vision over to the Baron. Dignitas have almost no hope of actually contesting that Baron because you'll have to walk through Hunted Thieves territory and into such a massive item difference that that's going to be rough. And remember, in both of the first two games of this series, River stole Baron away from Dignitas. Bold times, man. I don't even think Dignitas wants to go anywhere near the big purple. So you're box. saying it's Spica's turn now. I'm That's saying, what you're saying that if you're Dignitas and you're planning a vacation to Barren Shores, stay home. <laughs> All right? The rivers are overflowing up there, and it's not going to go in your favor. As Quid, going to get jumped on by Licorice, but he'll stand his ground and shoot right on back. Licorice trying to get away here from the onslaught as Jensen needs to escape, but oh no. The Emperor's going to sleep. Sniper and River still going in after him. Jensen kites it out for as long as he can, but they're so damn far behind. 20 minutes in and nearly an 11,000 gold lead for 100 Thieves with the enemy mid off the table. Down an ult, down a flash. Yet again, Tomo and Ayla, 2v3, unafraid here in this matchup in mid lane. Sven already down to one third HP. Tomo and Ayla take no damage because of the Senna healing. Isles tries to get back as Quid's unstoppable here in the bottom lane at the same time. Ayla takes the kill credit on Isles. 100 Thieves is breaking into the base. Baron be damn. Tomo and Ayla just took that 2v3 straight up against the Dignitas bot lane and the jungler in their face. Didn't even get low. The Echoes is complete now with the Black Cleaver there for Tomo. And he was keeping Ayla topped off. The bot lane tower is dying. They're TPing in for it. Sniper is pushing top. This series is over. 100 Thieves making it look easy. Inhibitor down mid, inhibitor under siege bottom. You can see Sniper going back to base now. He'll have teleport to join up with the rest of the Thieves. The minions are about to collide into the Nexus turrets and Sniper will make his arrival through TP. First Nexus turret is about to die. Sniper is tanky underneath the other and Isles is already dead. Licorice and the rest of Dignitas can do nothing in the face of a 100 Thieves squad that is this fed this far ahead. Speak is dead. And Licorice is running all the way back into the fountain. 100 Thieves in their most dominant performance yet of an incredibly dominant series are starting playoffs swinging. And a Haymaker collides with the jaws of Dignitas. A triple kill for Quinn to close it out. 20 to 4. 100 Thieves clean sweep their first series. They're killing Dignitas in the fountain. 
not even 22 minutes in, the game ends. The Nexus explodes. 100 Thieves sweep Dignitas into the lower bracket. They'll move on for a date with TL. That I think after today, you start thinking, hey, maybe there's that little bit of a chance. Maybe you have to believe in a little bit of 100 Thieves magic because they looked incredible today. All right, let's go join Jat on stage for an interview. Flowers. 100 Thieves, Tomo, Sniper, stick around, please. Congratulations on the win. Nice solo kill. I have to come to you, Tomo, first, though, because you talked about a little bit of revenge. How does it feel the 3-0, your former team? Honestly, it was a bit too easy. <laughs> like, really easy, actually. Yeah. Was it, uh, why, why do you think it was easier than you expected? Um, they didn't really contest us in anything. I felt like we just got away with, like, basically doing everything. So, yeah, I'm not sure. And, and Sniper, Last week on Pros, we talked about uh, yeah, the matchup with Dignitas like, and that you were pretty confident. Seems about right. What, what happened this series? I mean, I was just playing my normal game, and I did end up respecting Licorice while I was playing against them. So, yeah, I was just playing my game, and it worked out, you know? We ended up winning. Do you plan out your solo kill celebrations before the series? <laughs> it, it was actually uh, Grayson, or my coach, that told me to, like, do the solo or like do the emote <laughs> after I solo kill the enemy top laner. So yeah, shout out to him. He's right there, everyone. Let's look at him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we, we, we can blame. We can uh, send the fine to him. No, either way. Uh, congratulations on the win. You play Team Liquid next. What's your confidence level like now after this re really dominant series? I do feel like from the beginning of the split to now, I've like improved a lot, including like us as a team. So we're feeling very confident going into the Team Liquid match. We're gonna three zero them easily. Coming for you, in fact. And, and Tomo, y you've looked like a great teammate as well as a great performer since joining 100 Thieves, even holding the microphone for Sniper. <laughs> uh, how have you continued to settle in on Dignitas now that you're on your third week with them? You mean so, with, with 100 Thieves? Yeah, um, honestly, everyone's been really accommodating for me. I felt like really comfortable from the get go. And I just really believe in the players. I think they're all like really mechanically lifted. And I, I don't know, I just feel like I slot in really well on this team. Like, from the start of the like, first day of scrims, everything like, already clicked when it first game, I felt like. So, I don't know. Everything was so easy so yeah. far. I have noticed, because you're, you're still so quick with this team, I don't think you have a name on the oh, back yeah. of your jersey that says Tomo. I don't so, have... we, we can fix it right now. We're going to put some tape on the back for you. Thank you. And then, Sniper, if you want to do the honors and, and write, in, write in Tomo. Right. Yo, my is good, this is going to work. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you, can do, you can do the Tomo. Tomo, uh, hopefully you get to have a nice long playoff run. Congratulations, Tomo and Sniper, once again on the win. 100 Thieves, Tomo. Thank you. Uh, every series you've been on this team, you've been able to get the win. Uh, good luck next week against Team Liquid. We're down from here. Send it to the lounge. Thank you so much. Guys. <laughs> What the hell was that? <laughs> that was a fast day. I did not realize what this would look like. It doesn't look great. And it looks like the couch is eating me. <laughs> All right. I'm being buried by cushions. Uh, no, yeah. okay. Let's be um, serious about this. The, the actual great thing, uh, especially, I brought it up in my uh, discussion with Grayson really quickly. Game one yeah. was the closest game. And the thing I saw from 100 Thieves there that I really liked was that they were able to respond with good lane assignments uh, and they were able to, they looked more studied in the swap. Whereas yes. we talked about Dig, one of the things that they needed to improve on was, was being swap. prepared to go up against lane swaps. And it didn't look good again today. The series got, let's say, progressively distant from yeah. Dig as, as it went on. Um, but props to 100 Thieves, I think. I really, really have liked what I've seen from this team, especially with Tomo coming onto the roster. I love the, the segue on that one because, yes, they felt like they were a better, well-rounded team, but then better individuals. You mentioned Tomo. We still have to award player of the series. Who do you guys think won that one? I already Spoiler know who I voted alert. for. Three, two, one. <laughs> Mr. Quiddington. Let's go. Quidward uh, wins it himself. Talk about Quid throughout the series. Yeah, I mean, I think the big the big play that everyone's going to look at is that kill onto Jensen really early on in game two. Um, but he had such a strong mid prio as we see that again that got this smolder just 
absolutely rolling way earlier than we had expected. Yeah. Um, I loved the sol Smolder mid swap. I actually really liked what 100 Thieves did in their draft to set both Quid and Tomo up for success. And Quid was such a huge part of how this team performed really well in spring. He's back. True. 100 Thieves are rolling. That's one of those things is we felt like if it was going to be 100 Thieves having a run during the playoffs, it had to be both River and Quid really mm -hmm. coming through for this team. And I think it's been the team as a whole. Whenever it comes to player of the series or player of the game, anything like that, a lot of the times, if it's a stomp, every player had a hand in it. Mm -hmm. So we saw a replay of basically everyone just stomping, but Quid was the highlight, at least in this series. So. That's pretty nice to see from them. Let's take a look at the bracket to see where that leaves 100 Thieves, who they go up against next. That's going to be Team Liquid. That's going to be tough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, that it is, is going to be really tough. Yes, uh, it is. It's a good thing that Golden Glue said they're practicing lean swaps. Yep. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see them go up against TL. I think with the improvements they made, it's still going to be a very difficult matchup. And as you see, Dig drop down to the loser's bracket to await the loser of FlyQuest NRG tomorrow. It's funny because uh, I'm now invested. In, I love storyline. True. I love storytelling. I'm invested in the revenge tour. He just beat Dignitas. But remember who kicked Dignitas when, when Tomo was on that team out of playoffs last split? Who was it, Raz? Team Liquid. True. Just putting it out there. Of course, Team Liquid is, the, is a demon right now. But right now, maybe Tomo can make it happen. Now, of course, that's going to be it for us. Remember, we will be back here tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific, and we're going to be throwing it to the NACL. Playoff started. Blue Otter versus Supernova, I believe, is up first. And then FlyQuest Challengers versus TL Challengers, which is a surprise to see in the first round. Blue Otter have been an insane story, so check them out. True. That's going to be, we're going to be throwing it to that and that one there. But remember, tomorrow, FlyQuest, NRG, same time, same place. Take it easy. I'm going to throw this. Hello? Ah! It's not going to make it. Okay, okay, keep one shot, one shot, one shot, one shot. I'm TVing behind. I'm TVing behind. Go, look, look yeah, at me, look at me, look at me. Yeah, yeah. You guys can go. Look, you guys can go. I got them. I got them. Yeah, yeah, keep going. I'll give you a look. Don't be scared. Keep going. Kasante, Kasante, Kasante. I can look at Kasante. I have ulti here. I'm just going to sleep him. Okay, look, look. Okay. I'm TVing in three. I'm going to watch. I'm going to watch. I'm going to watch. Nice. Can we go Nash? I'm coming. Theo. Nice. We got Baron, guys. We got Baron. Take the back. We can still win this. Okay. We still win. We still win. I got to play Potencias for a minute. Oh, you guys are too good, bro. I actually right, got go. carried. I actually got carried. Good job. Check out, though. Yo, Renek to miss. <laughs> yeah. Nice. nice. <laughs> Renek top, guys. Run away, run I'm away. fine, I think. The, he slapped me? He might flash over. Yeah, he's flashing. Smolder's looking, Smolder's looking. Lily's looking, It looks really bad. I'm here, but... Look here, it's not bad. It's really, it's really bad. Just go, just go. Uh, I'm just gonna go, go. I'm gonna go. go. Right now. Just go. Yeah, you can go whenever, Bill. I go, go. I'm coming. Star Baron, Star Baron. I'm looking, Zeri. Zeri, weaning, 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 weaning. Weaning, weaning. Yep. Just fight, 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 just fight. Go mid. You guys can end mid, I think. Yeah. I think I can kill them. I'm base, okay. Oh, come on. I'm thinking kill me. You okay, bro, miss now. Oh, bro, bot. Oh, frick my life. I have ulti. I want to keep saying, bro. No push. Ooh. Yes, wow. One more, one more, one more. This reminds me of the freaking cloud right here, right here. This reminds me of the C9 series, One more, one more, one more. Jump, jump. I don't let that. No! Freaking zero dust. Zero dust. Yeah, guys. Freaking good job.